Top of the morning, Sunday sessions, episode seven. Here we are, live Q and A, where I answer your questions about entrepreneurship and mindset and scaling your Amazon business. Because if you can grow just one percent every single day, compounded over the course of the year, that is massive growth. I'm trying to change your perspective here. Thank you all for being here. Appreciate you. And let's get right into it. So anybody, if you got any questions, Amazon related, entrepreneurial related, business related, this is the place to ask them. We've been scaling our business for seven years, crushing it. I'm at the office right now. It is 10 a.m. on a Thursday, maybe, or Wednesday. I know a lot of people, when they look at our Instagram or our YouTube videos, the first thought is like, I'm never going to get that big, or or I can't relate to, to Amazon Lit because they're just so huge, right? But I want everybody to keep in mind that we weren't always massive sellers. You know, just a few years ago, we were literally operating out of a basement, packaging products, carrying them up the stairs, loading up a minivan, taking the minivan to UPS and USPS, and just flipping day after day, week after week. So anybody can get to this level you know we didn't wake up one day and say you know we want to operate a 40 million dollar 50 million dollar year amazon business it took baby steps step by step little by slowly we were able to scale to the level we're at now so i want to encourage anyone who's in the grind in the daily shuffle putting in that work to grow your business that it is possible you know it's going to take some skill and some dedication and determination incorporated with some discipline, but if you put in the action, it will happen. And most of our growth, to be completely transparent, because I'm all about transparency, most of our growth happens from task delegation. Because Sebastian and I, we're only two people. There's no way we would be able to grow this business as large as it is with just us working on it. So if you're at a point in your business now where you've hit this roadblock and you can't get any higher, I promise you, you have not reached the apex of your business. Your business can continue to scale, but you're going to need to delegate some of those tasks out. All right, so let's get to some questions here. The first question is, is FBA good for beginners in 2021? Absolutely, FBA is good for beginners. Um, I think right now, I, this is the best time to be selling on Amazon and I think as the months go by it's only going to get better there's more prime members than ever there's more opportunity so yes for beginners hundred percent really all about just starting taking that action and starting how do we track profits to reinvest um, so our repricer tracks profits and we take those numbers and we analyze them uh, monthly quarterly annually uh, we analyze them per vendor and then we analyze them as a whole per company and it really gives us a good picture of how much money we're making. Um, and two important numbers you wanna understand when you're scaling your Amazon business, and there's a dope YouTube video right here that breaks down how to analyze your profits, but two important numbers are your gross profit per ASIN and your production cost per ASIN. Now your gross profit per ASIN is how much money you're making you know, after fulfillment fees, referral fees, uh, cost of goods, all that stuff. So let's just say it's $4, right? Hypothetical answer right here, $4. But your production cost per ASIN is also super important to understand because you wanna know how much money it costs in time, in labor, in package supplies, how much money it costs to get that product out of the door, right? Because if it costs you $2 to get that product out of the door, and you're making $4 on it, that leaves you with $2 in net profits. So the lower you can get that production cost per ASIN, the more money you will be able to put back into your pocket, back into your company. It's a crucial number to understand, and it's very basic to get that out. You take your expenses over the course of a month and you divide it by the amount of orders you produced, and that would give you your production cost per ASIN. What percentage of your profits do the owners of the business pay themselves at the beginning when you were profiting around 300K to now. So the way we operate is we pay ourselves a salary, right? So a fluffy six-figure salary is what we pay ourselves. And then at the end of the year, we analyze how much money was made at the company and we analyze our expenses and what needs to be paid out and what money's owed to who, what distributors, what vendors do we owe money to. And then based on whatever's left over, we take what is called a draw, right? So we analyze the numbers. Let's say at the end of the year, we have 200K left. We'll split that up. 
um, between the three of us. Or if it's 500K, we'll split it up. So I think it's important to do this because some years you're going to perform better than other years. You don't want to create like a set salary where, you know, it's 3X of what you normally get because that year might just be not a good year for your Amazon business, but yet you're paying yourself three, four, five thousand dollars you know, every week or every month. And then it really adds up. And at the end of the year, like maybe I took too much money out of the business because most of the money that we get is reinvested back into the business. Don't get me wrong. You know, we, we get paid very well over here and we work very hard for our salaries and our bonuses, but you want to invest and reinvest as much money as possible into your company because that's what's going to scale it. You need money to make money. Scared money don't make money. You gotta reinvest into your business. The more inventory you can sell, the faster your business will grow. So long story short, pay yourself a reasonable salary, whatever you need to survive, plus a little extra so you can you know, diversify your portfolio with some cryptocurrency investments, real estate, stock, but also analyze your numbers by understanding what was previously talked about, your gross profit per ace in production costs, per ace in your expenses, um, you know, what kind of money you're paying out to other people's salaries, all that good stuff. You got to understand the ins and outs of your business. You got to understand that. You have to. You have to. I can literally, like right now, I know what we're making on average per sale for every single product we sell on an average cost basis, right? And I know what our gross profit is, our net profit is. I could just rattle those numbers off. And I know them when they change month to month because every Monday at our manager's meeting, I literally talk about them. I want the company to be aware of them because anything we can do as a collective team to get those numbers higher is good for the entire business. So it's really all about the planning and the mindset. And that's why I do these every week, because I'm trying to change your perspective, because the mental shift that can happen really opens up the floodgates. And that fence that you're trying to get over, that wall you were trying to get over that seems super high, and you're like, I'll never get over that 50 foot wall. All of a sudden that wall begins to shrink and the 50 foot wall becomes a 20 foot wall. And soon the huge 50 foot wall is so small, you can literally step over it because you've changed your mindset, you've changed your perspective, you've changed your processes within your company and you're able to take it to the next level. And it just happens organically because you've been taking action. That's really where the, the game changing action happens. Is it realistic to set a minimum of 20% profit on each product or should I be more flexible? What's your approach? Um, so I'm assuming you're talking about either A, product research or B in your repricing. So our minimum buying requirements are 10% gross profit margin um, because I'm a firm believer that a true Amazon wholesale business is the best way to go. Absolutely, you could focus on, you know, have your minimums at 20, 25%, 30%, but I promise you, you're gonna sell a lot less inventory. And I always, always, always would rather sell more inventory at a little less money than less inventory at a little more money because the amount of money you make through volume and how you can grow your Amazon storefront is just revolutionary in the process. That's why we've been able to grow so big, especially early on, which I'm assuming you're closer to early on than, than further advanced. Um, like our repricer, when we first started our business, our floor price was set at three and a half percent because we wanted to move inventory. And the last thing you wanna do when you're just getting started is have a product, let's say you set your repricer at 15%, and you have a product that needs to be at 12%. So if 21 days go by, you didn't sell one because you were worried about those three percentage points. Get rid of that sell it at 12%, forget the 15% for that specific product, bring that money back in, flip it, buy new inventory, rinse, wash, and repeat. It's crucial to understand the benefits of operating a true Amazon wholesale business, which is all about volume. I was opening an account recently, but saw they charge $49 or so for international markets. How do I avoid that charge? It's 49 bucks, bro. Don't avoid it. Just pay it. It's literally nothing. 
$49 in the grand scheme of things. Who knows? It could be a phenomenal relationship. That's like saying you're not going to sell on Amazon because there's a $39.99 a month service fee. Or that's like saying you're not going to pay for Keepa because it's 18 USD. It just doesn't make sense. It's 49 bucks in the grand scheme of life. It's nothing. It's literally nothing. So just pay it. Move on. Stop thinking about it. Diane says, Eric, changing the game to wholesale. What's the margin you consider to say, hey, buy it? 10%. You just discussed this a couple minutes previous in the video. 10% is the margin we're looking for at minimum. Now, our company average is about 22%. That's because we're not only buying 10% profit items. Um, that's the lowest we'll go based on volume. If a product's selling 50 units a day, I don't care if I'm making 10%. That just adds to the bottom line, which in turn decreases your production cost because you're able to produce more units, which in turn increases your net profits. So it's all, it's all a game of balance. So April 7th, we will be in Orlando and the evening of the 7th, we'll be hosting a meetup. We'd love everybody to come. It's absolutely free. I um, mean, just come kick it. There'll be a bunch of other Amazon sellers there. We'll be hanging out, networking. And then on the 8th, we're driving to Miami. And then probably on, I know whatever that Saturday is, which is like the 10th, I believe, we're doing a meetup at the Wizards of Ecom. I'm at their event space. We're gonna be hosting a, a meetup there. And then a day or two prior to that, we're gonna be hosting another meetup. So we'll be in Orlando and Miami April, 8th to 11th i believe so i hope to meet all of you in person if you're in that area i'd love to have you come by and hang out <laughs> you're my barber brian he said the beard's looking sharp thank you sir uh we use scan unlimited you can send me a, a message i, I got a, a link for you that could save you some money on it actually uh i'll put it i'll put it in the um i'll put it in the the uh what are they called the uh Whatever, whatever's below, the writing that's below, I'll put it there. Uh, when do you decide to pay for Amazon ads just for private label? Uh, immediately, immediately we decide. What we like to do is usually take the cost of goods. So let's say we spent $2,000 on inventory. We wanna have another $2,000 allocated to advertising. You gotta advertise. There's literally millions of products on Amazon. Nobody's going to know that your brand new private label product exists unless you're driving external traffic because you have a large Facebook following or you're running Facebook ads or you're, you have an email list. But other than that, you gotta advertise. So this is a great question. How do you get approved to sell replenishables? Uh, so that's not really the correct question. I'd like to reword that. It'd be like, how do you get approved to sell certain brands or how do you get engated for certain categories? That would be the correct question. Um, and really the best way to do that is to build relationships with distributors and get invoicing. So let's say you find a bunch of products you wanna buy and you need approval for two of them, right? What I would do is buy the minimum quantity that Amazon requires, which is 10 units. So most likely one case, I'd add it to the order. And then I would submit the invoicing for those products to Amazon to get approved. And now very high chance you'll get approved. And if you don't, worst case scenario is, you only have one case of product. So you maybe spent 20 to 40 bucks on the case. So you're not breaking the bank, right? So it's a low risk, high reward opportunity. Those are the opportunities you should be looking for. So best way to create systems. Should you pay someone that does operations? Uh, no, the best way to create systems would be to fly Sebastian myself out to your warehouse. We'll spend two days at your operation, maybe three and we'll create the systems for you. We'll reorganize your entire space and we'll show you exactly what needs to be done and how to do it. How much money do you recommend starting in wholesale on Amazon? Um, between two to $4,000 is the optimal amount to start with. Obviously, if you have more, it's better, but people have done it with less. We just had someone sign up for a course the other day. Um, they have about $1,500. This was maybe three weeks ago they joined and they already placed their first wholesale order. They found a wholesaler that had an, an MOQ, a minimum order quantity of a thousand bucks and they placed it up and they're ready to buy. Hey, Debbie. Hi. Hey, what's up? How are you? I'm good. I just got back from a dog walk. That's why you hear the dog screaming right now. Nice, nice. So what's going on? How are you living up there? I'm living okay, but what I'm going to do is I actually am inspired today because for you to pop up on a live feed, I'm going to take the course. I'm going to register right now. Nice. Amazing. So that's, 
Yeah, I'm excited too. That's what I like to hear. Taking action. That's what's going to help you succeed. I have to take right action because if I don't take action, no one's going to take it for me. I've discovered that. Yeah. I really have. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. What kind of made you like what what made you wake up today and be like, you know what? Today's the day. Well, first of all, it's going to be 70 degrees here in Massachusetts, <laughs> which would inspire anybody to freaking change their mind. So <laughs> I've decided to do that. And I just feel like it's it's really time. I don't know. I just felt like today was the day I need to do it. I'm going to spend my son's actually moving out and moving mm -hmm. into my father's home. So I think it's time for me to start to take control of my life a little bit. It's always been in control of somebody else. And I think it's time. I think at 54 years old, I need to like make it or break it. And I know I can make it at this stage of my life. Yeah, Debbie, I know you can make it as well. I'm super excited. And I'm humbled that you, you know, you've given us the opportunity to help you. And I know you're going to crush it just based on getting to know you over the past month or you so. You know I adore you, Eric. And anyone who doesn't know him needs to wake up and get to know him. He is the bomb. He, <laughs> he has helped me in more ways than one. He doesn't even know it. There'll be a day when we're going to meet because I'm going to come meet him in our my old hometown or somewhere nearby. We're going to have coffee and we're going to discuss how you've changed my life. And I really... Awesome. All of you should follow him and pay attention to what he says because he's brilliant. Mm. Mm. I appreciate the love, Debbie, and I'd love to grab a coffee next time you're in northern New Jersey. You know, I knew we, we grew up practically neighbors. We just didn't know we both existed. But you have a great time in Florida. I was super envious when I heard you were going to Florida. But I'll be, I'll be at one of your meetups when you come to, like, the New York area or something like that. But I would have loved to have gone to Florida, but now is not the time at my age to get on a plane. But, hey. Yeah, yeah, ahead. yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, we'll be having some locally as well in the Northeast. So we'd love to have you there. You know, we look we look forward. I love one of my favorite things to do, Debbie, is meet everybody kind of in person, you know, and just get to know them on a deeper level and, and, and learn about what their goals are and their families. And I think it's an important aspect of this whole, you know, just connection we all have. Yeah, I think we've lost connection with each other. And I think that for those who are on Clubhouse, that definitely has connected me. But I also think that it is really important to reach out. If somebody gives you a little limb to grab onto, grab onto it. And Eric, you gave me a limb and I'm grabbing onto that limb and I'm going to climb right up that tree. You watch. Awesome. Fantastic. I'm super excited for you. I look forward to seeing you on Monday night's uh, live coaching call. We'll I'll see be you there. Then and be there. spend some time exploring the content before then. And then we'll see you, we'll see you in a couple days. I can't wait, Eric. Good luck. Have a great day, everybody. Take All right. Care. We'll see ya. Bye-bye, honey. I hope that's her name. I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> I'm terrible with names. <laughs> Sebastian and, and Ted always joke with me. I'm literally, it takes me months to learn people's names. I don't know what, what it is, but we, we joke sometimes that they're going to create a, because we're always hiring new employees over there. Like literally always we get new employees. So uh, sometimes, you know, we'll get five in a month and it's like, and then, and then two of them leave and we get three new ones. And then it's just always new people here. So uh, they always joke that on the back of my door, they're going to get like a mug shot with like the name. So before I walk out, I can review it and be like, all right, this is Jen and this is Stacy and this is Hernando. And, all these people, but, um, yeah, I have 2k capital. Should I start with FBM or FBA? I think FBA. So a quick little story. Um, when we first started selling on Amazon, we started with FBM because we just didn't know about how lucrative FBA was. Um, so what we did was we bought a bunch of products from Costco. They were Welch's fruit snacks and we listed them at FBM and we were selling like two, three, four units a day. We were like, you know what, let's try FBA. And we shipped them all to Amazon and we started selling 30, 40 units a day. And it was just like, what? The opportunity is crazy. Um, so this is a great question. Jonas said, hi, I'm a private label Amazon seller with three years experience. Which is the first step to do wholesale? So your first step would be building relationships with wholesalers or distributors. So it's a very straightforward process. Um, you gotta, first, you got to find them, right? There's a good video right here that breaks down how to find them. Um, and there's also eight or nine other different methods we use on how to source and find profitable distributors. But this one right here is the one that you can watch um, and you have access to on our YouTube channel. But first, you want to build a relationship 
get catalogs and then use those catalogs to research products. And based off the products in those catalogs, you want to start placing orders. And the reason why I can't stress the importance enough about building relationships, like just for example, we're going to Orlando to stop by a trade show for four hours just to say what's up. That's why we booked this trip to Orlando and Miami in a month. We're just going to stop by the trade show for four hours and say what's up to the distributors that we do business with. So it's not... It's it's really all about the relationships. Hold on one second. Don't go. Hey, what's up? Yeah, he's in a developers meeting. You need him? Okay. All right. Okay, I'll I'll let him know right now. I'll poke my head in, but I know he's in the meeting for about another, you know. F- uh, I think it ends at 11 or 11.30, so. Okay. All right, great. Yeah, everything else is good, man. We're grinding over here. We're going to get those seven shipments out, so it's exciting. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I'm going through some, some uh, non-competitive inventory now and just kind of analyzing it and, you know, we're probably missing out on some opportunity, but you're right, it did slow down. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, too. This week, um, I think for, like, schools, it's spring break as well, so. I don't know what that means. It, it means that they don't go to school or they don't open their computers and join Zoom. <laughs> Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. But it's just interesting that one of our busiest weeks last year looks like today is going to be one of the slowest days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's ironic. Yeah, it's the ebbs and flows, Ted. All right. Just let him know that. All right. I'll I'll talk to him right now. I'm just wrapping this up and then I'll sl- poke my head in his meeting and let him know. The truck should be there. Yes, I believe it. I believe when I was uh, downstairs this morning, they were unloading it. Oh, no, 100%. 100% because he just came into my office about this product and was asking me about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They weren't going to release it off the truck. Though they made a payment. Yeah. All right. No problem. All right. I'll talk to you. So humble Ted. He was just, we were talking because last week was our best sales week ever in the history of our business. And now this week, sales have kind of slowed down a little bit. It's still phenomenal don't get me wrong averaging hundred twenty thousand dollar sales days but we think the reason why is there's a few reasons probably the weather's a little nicer people are getting outside more um they've been cooped up for you know months and months and months and almost actually a year because of covid also spring break could have an effect on it um i know some people are traveling a lot of people are still too concerned to travel but there are i have some friends who are traveling um so that's probably plays a role in it and also people are probably waiting for these stimulus checks to come before they go you know buying some products so there'll be an influx of sales For anybody who sells on Amazon or really any e-commerce or physical product, there will be an influx of sales when those checks come through. Nicole said, you go, girl. Talking about my conversation with Debbie, she said, all of us in the course are crushing it. Absolutely. I love that. I love that. This is literally, I get this question often, like, why do we give all of this information away? A, because it feels so fucking good. It feels so good. Like just that, just that comment that Nicole left, like we're all crushing it or having that conversation with Debbie, like that is why we do that. Because it's it's just seven years ago, it didn't exist. There was nobody like Sebastian and I helping anybody. There was no YouTube channels about FBA. It was just, it was a completely different world. We're not, and I like competition. So it's like, a, and a 3,000 people sign up to sell on Amazon every day anyway. I might as well help them do it successfully. Uh, the name of the course is eSellers RI. Um, if you go to our Instagram page, there's some information about it in the link in the bio. And I want to start, but it's just so much to learn and so much information. And I agree with that. And that's why we created our training. The amount of time you're going to spend trying to figure out everything that's in the training, first of all, it'd be seven, eight years. It's going to, it's combined, it's 15 years worth of Amazon experience, including in our course. Uh, But the amount of time you're going to spend getting all that information, even the initial steps in the process, it's six to eight months. Easy. 
easy you'll spend researching what we can show you in a couple hours worth of video because you'll be piecemealing it together, taking a piece of information from this YouTube channel, one from this YouTube channel, one from this Facebook group, one from this Reddit post, one from this Instagram story. And it's just, it gets confusing because then you got to document it all. But what we did was we put it all in one place. Um, do we sell on listings that Amazon sells on? Absolutely, we sell on listings that Amazon sells on. There's a ton of money to be made. And there's a few things you want to be looking at. The first thing is what price are they listed at? If they are dominating the buy box and they are listed consistently at the buy box price, owning it all of the time, and they're not letting other third party sellers jump in. And the way you can analyze that is by looking at the keeper charts and clicking on those little buy box dots and seeing who's in the buy box, then that is not a good listing to sell on. There's also listings where they're listed less than other third party sellers. That is not a good listing to sell on. The two types of good listings to sell on are one where they're not consistently out of stock. So you expand it. I suggest everybody has their keeper chart. When you go to settings, you can expand it to a year view initially when it opens, but I suggest everybody does that. So if you're looking at the year view and they're not in stock all the time, they're in stock 40% of the time, they go in stock for two weeks, out of stock three, in stock two, out of stock three, that's a good product to sell on. And then when you expand it to the life of the listing, if that's consistent, then it's probably going to continue with that consistency. Another good Amazon listing to sell on is one where they're listed higher than the normal buy box price. So let's say FBA sellers are winning the buy box at $16.99, but Amazon's always at $18.99. This is a very common theme you'll see on listings that Amazon sells on as well. But there's a really good video um, explaining Keepa charts and ones to look out for right here. So you could check that. Um, so with that being said, everyone, Sunday Sessions, Episode 7. Super grateful to have each and every one of you here. I appreciate all of you. I'm excited to see some of you in Orlando and in Miami in the beginning of April. We'll be down there hanging out, kicking it, meeting you all in person, having some food, enjoying some drinks, and just networking, growing our community, because that's what this is about. So I hope I've had a change in your mindset today, because that's the goal, right? A change in perspective to enable you to continue to grow on a daily basis. It's all about that 1% increase every single day compounded over a year, five years, 10 years, massive growth. So I appreciate you all, stay grateful and stay lit.